Raising children is a blessing that many of us are very fortunate to have the opportunity to do. That being said, sometimes children can be, well, a little difficult, like what you may have seen on, okay, we're going to show it one more time, and then we promise we're not going to show it anymore after this. Watch. If you don't kick me for a few days, maybe I'll give your care about book back. Mom? Time to is best. <laughs> Andra, stop! Just... Oh Can't wait to hear what you have to say. Yeah, we all want to know what Dr. Owen is going to say about that mess. Okay, so here to help new parents, relatively new parents, parents of toddlers raise a child not to act like that is Dr. Tracy Alloway. She's also the author of The Working Memory Advantage, Train Your Brain to Function Stronger, Smarter, and Faster. Dr. Alloway, it is so good to see you. Thanks for being here. What was that mess? <laughs> it was like, I see that. I'm like, oh, dear sweet Jesus, what was going on there? Well, I think one principle that we can learn from the way a mother and a primary caregiver and a child interact is known as attachment theory and so you have different ways in which the mother will pay attention to the child and then the child will respond to that and so for example if the mother is kind of ambivalent in the parenting so very inconsistent not always providing that care and attention then the child acts in a very ambivalent way where they they sometimes want the mom but then sometimes they ignore them and you see situations like this happen okay so you have three tips to help bring out really the best in your child and at what age should you be incorporating these tips I think the first tip, singing to your child, is yeah. one that we can do as soon as our little ones are born. And it's a fantastic tip because research shows that this form of communication actually does a couple of things. First of all, it helps the mother and child bond. So they don't, they don't care about what the mom sounds like. They just focus all their attention on the pitch. And research shows that the infant will start mimicking that same tone, that same pattern that the mom is taking. So it's a great way of bonding. And the mm -hmm. second thing the child is doing is learning how to communicate. They learn how to sing along with the mom in their own way by coos and sound. So, so it's a beautiful way. So, and so they're advancing themselves and they're also getting comfortable knowing that mom is present, mm -hmm. right? So they have that like attachment as you were mentioning. You yes. also say naps for the win. Now, what is naps <laughs> for? I mean, I, I would love to get a nap in. I would be a total winner if I could do that. But nah, we're not napping so much right now. <laughs> well, one of the great pieces of research that just came out was that children learn better after a nap. So when they actually taught them a list of new vocabulary words and then had them take a 30-minute nap, they were able to remember that compared to when they didn't nap and they went off to play. So that sense of sleep really consolidates their learning. So if you're trying to teach your two-year-old or even your one-year-old or three-year-old a new, a new word or new, you know, new information and so on, have, do that just before they nap. So try to plan that learning That's phase. That's interesting because I would think just after they nap, like they're well rested, mm -hmm. right? They're waking up. Okay, you're ready to learn, but you say really the antithesis is true just to do it before they go down. Exactly, and that's because that sleep helps consolidate um, that learning process. But the fascinating thing is, Casey, we see this happen even in adults, that adults learn better just before bedtime as well. Really? Yes. All that reading I'm doing at <laughs> night is I'm falling asleep. Okay, well, maybe some of it will sink in. You're learning it all. I'll <laughs> sink in. Uh, what about Dr. Seuss v Sesame Street. What the, what's the difference? I'm sure, like parents, as they you know they they want their kids if they're going to be watching um, you know various programs. Are these educational programs great? And if so, which ones are better than others? And that's a great question. And so I took it to my own research lab, and we tested a group of two and three year olds to find out are there some educational programs that are better? How do they compare with actually reading books? And what we found was two important things. One that educational programs were no better than watching sports. The key, really? Yes, the key aspect was that the parent was engaged with the child. Uh -huh. So it's not about just you know, putting them there and say, hey, watch this. It was when the parent was sitting and communicating and bonding with the child. Now, obviously, it has to be age appropriate. Um, but the second thing that we found was that these education programs weren't any better than reading uh, a book to your child. Again, when you're reading a book, you're teaching them new vocabulary words and so on. And you're also teaching them how to communicate, how to, how to focus, how to look at a page. So those are all great skills that they can carry on when they begin school. And it's school. the interactivity, right, too, between reading the book versus just being a participant and watching the TV unfold where you're not really engaging in it, right? You're just watching versus reading a book, right? You're interacting with the parent. That's exactly right. So it's the difference between that passive versus the active engagement where you're actually responding to a parent. The mom may say, hey, did you see this on the screen? Mm -hmm. So just actually talking about that with the child, regardless of the program, you know, can make a difference. So as parents, we shouldn't necessarily beat ourselves up that we didn't get the perfect educational DVD 
for our children. What's more important is that you're next to them saying, you know, and talking to them. I mean, I'm noticing a theme throughout everything. It's being <laughs> present, being yes. there, being engaged, being involved as much as you can because I know it's very hard for parents sure. to be there all the time mm -hmm. as I am here now and my <laughs> child is not. Uh, we got to go very quickly. Tell me about the book. So this is a book that we had a chance to write looking at how to improve uh, our brain at all ages. So we look at parenting tips, we look at research looking at Alzheimer's, adult life, learning, we look at ADHD and dyslexia. So there's lots of good tips that we can take on board, food to eat even, um, lots of habits that we can incorporate to make sure that our brain is working optimally. Awesome. Thank you so much Thank for being you. here. We appreciate you, Dr. Al. I would talk to you really the entire show if we could. <laughs> uh, but you can pick up again a copy of her book, The Working Memory Advantage, Train Your Brain to Function Stronger, Smarter and Faster at Amazon as well as other locations like Rona's Place, Out of the Beach, the bookmark. All right, coming up after the break, why now may be a good time to travel with a family and some ways to save money to boot. Tips and tricks from a travel expert, Sarah Gavin, coming up next.